hello everyone you're welcome to our channel we want to thank you especially for your support now in today's video apostle john Suleiman is playing his ordeal with the kidnapper who offered him the sum of three hundred thousand dollars now the reason why the kidnapper offered him that money we don't know we didn't mention but something else happened after the money was being offered to a young man brought some bundle of money, some huge wad of dollars, wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped in bags, about three, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. That is three hundred thousand US dollars. Boy, whether you agree or not, that is some good money. And he said, God said, I should give it to you. And I was so excited to hold it. God said, don't take it. I said, eh? So what? He said, don't take it. I said, Father. 300k. God said, don't take it. I was looking at my office. I was looking at the boy. The Lord said, tell him to go with it. I said, they should go with it. And as he left, I sat down. I said, God, even you. Can you see the projects that we have around here? I don't go on social media. I'm not a social media person. I don't, I don't, my wife is here. I don't go, I don't go there. But I'm always, I use the Twitter handle. I use my Twitter. One day I sat down, two weeks after that, I was going through my Twitter. I saw somebody sitting on the ground. The person was sitting on the ground and the, the, the police were interviewing the person. They said the person is a kidnapper and the person kidnapped this and the person did this. They were asking him who has he, and, and who he, has he kidnapped. They said he, he poses money on social media. He does this, he does that. I looked at the face. I was really confused. I zoomed the face. It was the boy that came to my office some weeks back with money, a kidnapper. Am I talking to somebody here? And I said, hey! Mentioning names, listing names. That's how my name would have entered into it. And they will not say that's the first time. They will say that's how he has been collected. God cannot lie. Go, go, God. Listen to the counsels of God. I decree you will not be found in error. You will not be found in error. Your innocence will not put you in trouble. Your innocence will not put you in trouble. No, no. And God decided to end that reproach. But the first thing he did was he was kind. That's what he kind. If your reproach must end, you must understand the mystery of kindness. The mystery of kindness. Listen to me. When you treat your wife, understand that is somebody's daughter. When you treat your husband, understand that is somebody's son. When you treat your neighbor, understand these are human beings like you. Before you say anything to anybody, first say it to yourself. When you call your phone, you want to send an insulting message to someone, read it to yourself. You are not okay. You are stupid. Read it. I am not okay. I am. Uh -uh. It's not right. Believe it. Am I communicating to somebody here? If you operate like that, your words will be seasoned with grace. Before you do anything to anybody, put yourself in the shoes. Be kind to people. A man called Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Joseph told his brothers his dream and the brothers betrayed him. And Joseph was in prison. And if some of us would be bitter and angry, but yet one day there were two men in the prison with him. Both of them dreamt. And when they woke up, their faces were sad. Joseph looked at them and said, why are you sad? When I saw that, I asked myself a question. Joseph is the one who was supposed to be sad because his father was not asking of him. His brothers abandoned him. But his first wife put him in prison. Despite that, he was not sad. He asked the men around him, why are you sad? Why is your countenance falling? And they told him, and he told him their dreams, and he explained and interpreted their dreams for them. Child of God, you must get to understand. Don't let circumstance take your joy. Don't allow the problems of life take your happiness. Be joyful in the Lord. In James chapter 1 verse 2, he said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith will take patience. Let patience have a perfect work in you. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? 
in Psalm 16 and 11, that will show me the path of life. For in thy presence there is fullness of joy, and thy right hand are pleasures evermore. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, the joy of the Lord. Be kind to people. Some of you, some of you looking at me now, what the enemy is holding against you is the way you have treated people. Certain people that came into your life that crossed your path. The way you treated them is why your heaven is shot. The way you treated them, you are wondering, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? But God is saying there's somebody that crossed your path. Oh, that person had the key to your next level. But your heaven is shot because of the way you treated them. Be kind. Ephesians 4.32 It said, be kind ye one to another. Develop the virtue of kindness. Number two. And then maybe I'll just pray here. Number two. Direction. If you must end the reproach, you must believe God for direction. The Bible says, and they said to him, Go to Jordan and dip yourself seven times. There are some of you looking at me right now. You have come to a junction of your life. Life has quarantined you. Life has bracketized you. You don't know what step to do. All you need now is direction. What is God saying now? What step should I take? There are people who are in Germany and God wants them in Spain. There are people who are in Spain. God wants them in Chicago. There are people who are in Chicago. God wants them in UK. What is God saying for my life? What is the plan and the purpose? The agenda of God for my life, you need direction. Am I speaking here? In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, verse and 6, he said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. All understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. If only you can trust God. God, God wants to give you direction. Your years of confusion is over. Your years of struggle is over. Heaven is bringing direction to you. Your years of delay is over. Heaven is bringing direction to you. You are receiving a common direction. You are receiving direction in your marriage. You are receiving direction in your home. You are receiving direction in your business. Take your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks ago, a young boy came upstairs to my office with a girl that he wants to get married to. And as soon as they came to the office, normally it doesn't matter how you bring to me, even if you bring Satan, I won't say no. But from my reaction, you will know what I'm saying. Even if you bring Satan, he brought the girl. On a normal day, I will not say no. When I look at both of you and I throw in my face, I say it is well with you. A wise son knows that is where the rubber meets the road. That is the end of it. When I lay my hands on you and bless you, so they understand. But this time, I didn't do any of the two. I looked at him in the face. I said no. That's not me, naturally. As he left the office, of course, you know members, they, they gossip. He told another person, he said, I went to Papa's office. He said, what is it? Papa said no. He said, Papa cannot say no. He said, Papa said no. Papa cannot say no. Papa said no. Papa, Papa cannot say no. Papa will talk, but he will not say no. They were arguing. So another person told him, go ahead and, and continue your relationship. So he continued the relationship. <laughs> A week after that, the young girl was coming to the house cooking, for them doing everything a week after that he called me and he said that is trouble i said well he said i should help him as was the matter he says in the police station what are you doing in the police station he said he beats up the girl and the police has arrested him i said so what do you want me to do you beat up a girl you, you have been arrested you should face the crime he said papa you don't understand i spoke to the officers they bailed him and said he has to return back to the station on Sunday, last Sunday, he was in my office. I said, I know you to be a decent boy. Why did you beat up the girl? The girl went to work with the mom in the house. 
He said they called him at work. That he should rush home. There's a problem. He rushed home. And he opened the door and saw the girl on top of his mother. Meaningful deliverance. Papa, I can't watch them beat up my mother. I said, so you not beat up the girl. I said, Papa, I couldn't take it. I said, now you have a police case. What did I tell you three weeks ago? Papa, is it not those stupid people? God cannot lie. He sees the end from the beginning. I, I'm not communicating here. He sees the end from the beginning. Any pit you want to enter, I decree, just before you enter that pit, God will preserve you. trap that has been prepared for you and it's trap prepared for your family maybe you have a brother you have a sister and you are concerned about them you have a relative you are concerned about them you have a son you have a daughter you are concerned about them and you are asking god that they don't make mistakes you are asking god that they don't take the wrong step you are asking god they don't go out of line you are asking god that they don't shift from the plan and purpose of god i make a declaration in the name of jesus you will not be a victim of life you will not be a victim of a trap, you'll not be a victim of a spell, you'll not be a victim of a setup. The Lord shall deliver you from six trouble, and in seven trouble, you shall not be a victim. The Lord shall deliver you from the terror by night, the arrow that fly by day, the pestilence that stuck at your darkness. Am I speaking to somebody here? You'll not be a victim of a trap. Remain standing, remain standing. Men standing. Do you know when people say they have wasted some years, they say, Oh, I wasted these years. This year has not been productive. That year has not been productive. It's because that period of their life that seemed wasted was on the platform of the absence of direction. If you get signals from heaven and you know what to do, productivity emerges. Nothing.